for me after traveling a lot when I you know being in the Bay Area and being California born and raised like queer was definitely a part of like my upbringing went to a women's college you know post second wave feminist and I was like yeah I'm a dyke I'm all these things um and then moving to the Bay Area and then like this kind of emergence and solidarity around queerness um which I really love because I feel like there's a lot of exclusion especially in some of the different movements, um, particularly like lacking people of color and whatever, that um, that I think queerness takes extra steps to include. Um, but as I traveled more, I realized that you know queerness is definitely more of a Western term. And so when I said I was queer, people were like, "Huh?" And they're like, "You're like you like you're bisexual?" And I'm like, "No." Like it's it was very hard to explain, especially because I have very limited language skills and everything except for English. Um, so I realized that there is definitely, when I traveled, I had a sense of queerness from home. And when I was home, that's definitely what I identify as and still do. But I also kind of re, kind of established this sense of what lesbian being, what being a lesbian is. And I think that a lot of, there was a lot of resistance initially being in the Bay because um, as someone who's definitely more kind of on the masculine spectrum, kitty. Um, I was like, oh, I'm gender fluid, I'm gender queer, and I still feel like I'm those things, but I also realized I really identify as a woman, and I'm really proud to be a woman and to show the diversity of what being a woman is. And um, I'm definitely attracted to people who are female identified and who are femme and beautiful. <laughs> and my kitty is such an attention whore. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I would say I'm queer in the sense that I love the idea of inclusion and creating solidarity around differences and exploring and being creative around that, sexually speaking as well as gender and the way those intersect. Um, and I'm also a lesbian. So kind of the, it's the big question that everybody kind of asks when they talk to someone who does porn, especially if they're not familiar with it, why? Did you get started but specifically why queer porn and for me um like i actually like was academically interested in porn way before i was ever kind of intimately invested in porn um i think porn in terms of like the way i was involved with it was through my studies i started doing um, photography in college and started like researching a lot of queer artists and um realizing that a lot of queer artists especially during the 70s and 80s would draw images of queerness from what was available, um, such as pornography. And I think that, you know, now we're starting to see an emergence of more queer imagery, but we realize there's such a lack of it. So what a lot of the early image makers of queerness within the arts community were doing were drawing these kind of more mainstream images and recontextualizing and um, reclaiming them and using them to make create their own kind of dialogue from this these pictures and words and whatnot. So for me, I started like I was really academically, it sounds like really kind of funny because it's almost like sterilizes it in a way, but I was really academically interested in it and started doing my own photographic study of my friends and community, shooting them like in a very like sexualized context and that became my um, thesis for undergrad work. So that kind of the jumping board from there is just like I wanted to continue to do kind of research work but then in the real world. So I ended up in turning for Honor Backs magazine, which was the first and only, I think, like at the time, lesbian, dyke, hardcore sex magazine. Um, and I worked in the art department for a little while. I was, well, of course, I moved to the Bay Area after um, college and then ended up getting a job at Good Vibrations, which was a woman's own co op. I mean, how more like kind of queer can you really get when you're doing all this kind of porny stuff? and women's co op things were really funny. But um, <laughs> I ended up working at GV and then uh, met Shine Louise Houston where she started her first, she was starting a company at the time and she asked me for actually help to do like PR stuff. Um, and at the time, I mean, probably people who know that run small businesses are like wear many hats. So I was like, okay, I'll do photographs and help you with web stuff and also be in the movie if you need it. So that's kind of like the first steps I took to doing it, um, which were also coinciding with me, you know, working for Honor Backs, working, I, I did my first kind of nudie shoot for them. That was like my kind of getting my kind of toes wet was I did like a kickboxing theme shoot. And I think I actually have the magazine somewhere around here. I try to dig it up for you. Um, and then uh, working at GV, meeting Shine, but also coincidentally meeting people who are shooting more fetish work. 
And so I started doing kind of fetish wrestling at the time, which is also very hardcore. So everything kind of, kind of funneled into this like pathway and all these opportunities and then queer porn just kind of blew up and there's been, it's just been kind of, the momentum hasn't stopped. There's mm -hmm. continual opportunities to shoot. Um, I mean, you can make a career in it in some ways. I mean, everyone, it's just like art, you kind of have to have a day job, so don't quit that. But at the same time, there's just more and more opportunities to be involved. And so for me, it was this partial academic endeavor that was closely tied into my identity and then the whole idea of personal is political, which came kind of from that um, arts movement in the 90s and 80s. Um, and that kind of spurred me into like, let's take the theory and do some practice work. Um, and this kind of praxis of practice and theory combined was pornography for me, queer porn. Mm -hmm. um, and as kind of I moved on, the, the beauty of queer porn and the gaining momentum and having opportunities to work is that you can actually create a sustainable a medium. The flip side is that I think that a lot of the meaningful, um, groundbreaking political messages behind it can lose, can kind of drop from the surface and so we don't see them as much. I mean they're still there, they're still very much a core essence of why a lot of people are doing porn but I think that you know there are all the other elements of life kind of come into play when things take a, a broader I guess spotlight. Mm -hmm. Yeah I mean it, talking about like this momentum, this wave and it continues to grow with queer porn. Um, what is interesting to see what has happened is a lot of the mainstream companies have opened up their doors to employing um, queer performers, very queer looking ones, not kind of where you go down there and you shift your appearance. So um, what that kind of happened for me in like 2008 where like I started to get mainstream offers from mainstream companies in LA and, um, it, and I was initially really psyched on it. It allowed me to kind of do my fighting which was really doesn't pay anything and actually costs money to do. Um, so it was a, kind of giving me this occupational flexibility versus you know working a full, like a part-time, full-time job and shooting. Um, and I started shooting like a lot. Like I was going down there, I won two weeks out of the month and doing like, you know, three to five scenes and it was great pay and great money. And I also, like, was early 20s and it was kind of like, or kind of early mid 20s and I was very much like, I'm not being ageist, I'm not, but I was, I personally, it was just kind of a hot mess. Like it was just, everything was just like, all this opportunity and all this momentum and all these things. And it's a kind of, I'm the person that like, I want everything. And so I kind of went for everything. And eventually I kind of burnt myself out <laughs> by like just going for everything. Um, I don't know if I see a direct correlation between working for mainstream companies. I actually really enjoyed going down to LA. And I, when I went down to LA, I didn't, like I feel like a lot of times, you know, if you're a queer and you're in a community that isn't like aware of you or presence or very like you feel oppressed by, like we have to take on this role of educator and a lot of people are, do a really great job at it. But for me going down to LA and working, I wasn't like, you know, I'm like, I'm not getting paid to be an educator and I'm, you know, unfortunately educators don't get paid much either. But I was like, I'm gonna go down there and I'm just gonna work. And it's like, I'm just gonna be me, I'm gonna do my thing and I'm gonna you know, take it as it is. Um, and so like, I kinda went into it with a tough skin. I, would, I wasn't there to ch make a difference or change. And the thing, the pleasant surprise I found was that most of the companies I worked for wanted me to be me. Um, they, I didn't come down there and they weren't like, okay, put on these heels and you know, let's like tease out your hair. Um, they're like, no, like I, I would bring a bag and I was like, okay, what do you want me to wear like out of this bag? And they're like, just wear what you should up in. And I'm like, really? Like I'm like, they kind of, I'm like a little sweaty. I'm like, you know, I've got like a hole in my shirt, you know, I'm just, it was just what I would wear on a daily basis. And so in a lot of ways it, it wasn't too different from, you know, working, um, up in the Bay and doing queer work because I was just being me. Um, the thing that was different was the people I was shooting with. So it was a lot of like, you know, very like mainstream LA type porn stars who definitely had their role and their hyper, like hyper gender role. And oftentimes it wasn't who they were. They were playing the role and I was just coming in as, maybe they thought I was such a caricature, like I didn't even need to, you know, dress up, which is possible. But um, the thing that was great is just I met a lot of people and um, 
most of the people were pretty cool and I at the time I was doing fighting and in the fighting world in comparison was so um, homophobic and sexist that LA porn seemed pretty accepting um, and there was something refreshing about that um, there's something also refreshing about like at that time like I was poly I'm not currently poly I'm in a wonderful monogamous relationship um, but at that time I was poly and things got uh, a little complicated because I was shooting with various people and you know relationships are relationships and there's always a degree of conflict and uh, resolution and so that was definitely tied into the work that I did up in the Bay Area and so that made the work in the Bay Area a little heavier and a little more emotionally labor-intensive because I had to not only navigate you know the occupational professional world but I also had to navigate the emotions that went around or into that and were like, ingrained in my personal life and so it was far more personal than just going to LA, shooting a scene, packing my bags, grabbing some food and going to go into my hotel. Like super easy. That was in much more of a sense of job. And in a job in a way that was very nice because I didn't take it home with me. Mm -hmm. And I had to talk about things when I got home. Um, so there was I didn't have so much of a conflict with that space because I kinda took it for what it was. And I, I wasn't there to change anything about it and I actually was happy with the way, you know, things went. Um, but again, I didn't work down there too long. I was there for, you know, did it about, intensively for about a year. And I only worked for companies that, um, I wasn't trying to work for everybody. I just worked for companies just who wanted, who enjoyed me for who I am. And I, I had, you know, pretty, pretty solid time doing it. So in 2010, early 2010, I decided I kind of, I was kind of burnt out. Um, I was just working a lot. Um, I was in a lot of relationships. I had just like a handful of things to deal with, and it was just like you know, like I had seen like a tarot card reader like a year or two before, and they're like, "Your travels in your future," and I was just like, I really resonated. So um, I kind of just saved up shooting, and I had just kind of tried to phase out on my jobs. And by the time 2010 came around, I was ready. I had my tickets and everything and decided like I needed a break from um, kind of everything and I couldn't really tell what it was that I needed a break from because everything was so enmeshed. Mm -hmm. So I ended up leaving um, training and I went down to South America, Brazil, um, then I went to Berlin for a second, uh, to Tokyo for a couple months where I met my girlfriend and then I went to Thailand and then came back to the States and it was just like this kind of really wonderful break where I just focused on something very simple just learning language and training fighting and um, gave me a lot of time to think and just sort things out um, and when I came back I was just like um I don't really think like I still kind of needed a break from things in my life that were there before and trying to figure out my relationship to them. Um, I realized that when, because I wasn't able to maintain boundaries in the rest of my life with porn, it was also difficult. So it ended up like the performative aspect of porn started to kind of consume my, a, a little bit of my psyche. Like it, things became more performative based and like I kind of lost, lost touch of what I really wanted and needed. And I think just taking, you know, I, I shot like once or twice last year, but really, essentially I took two years off and it was really kind of wonderful. Um, just, no, it's actually, yeah, it's been a year and a half. Well, um, just to kind of figure out what it is I want and then kind of watch old videos of my interviews and be like, man, I'm an ass. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, I don't know if it's just like, you know, who it was at the time or if I've just been really well trained by my girlfriend right now. But I was like, oh, if I come off as a little, a little abrasive. But well, it was a character. It was a character, but I mean, you draw who you are on camera. Is there's like a piece of your ego or whoever it is that in your brain that you just take it and you run. You let it run free, mm -hmm. and we don't let it run free in our normal life because apparently we wouldn't have any friends if we did, or maybe we would have many. But um, but I think that there was a moment where it's just like I'm like, ooh, like that's getting ugly. <laughs> um, but I mean, I also find it hilarious and fun and all these other things. It's still a part of me, but. So it's funny to kind of go back to that, but now like this is like the first shoot back. Um, so it's weird, like I'm not normally nervous for shoots, but I'm just like, oh, I feel little butterflies and I feel a little, um, I'm like, oh, I wonder how it goes. I also don't shoot solos, like often. I've only shot like two ever. Um, so that's gonna be really fun because I actually, when I watch porn, I really love solos. I love like, solos are kind of my favorite actually. Um, so it's 
I'm kind of trying to take what I love and try to emulate it. Um, so it's really awesome to shoot for queer porn TV because I think that the concept of a solo fits really well with queer porn TV. Like the idea that like, you know, this, you're highlighting a personality in person and who they are and then their sexuality. Um, because a lot of times when you shoot with a partner, it's, you know, the camera could become secondary and I think, for me personally, I think it should be. I think the chemistry and the focus should be between the two people and then they bring that to the camera. And so there's, it's more of a conversation happening between the two people and it's more about that conversation versus those two people's individual identities, which do shine through, but it's, that's not the central focus. So I'm super curious to see how this comes out because I feel like I've done a lot of personal growth and I don't shoot a lot of solos. So I feel like in a way it's going to be this like, like old me, new me, kind of like platform uh, come, allows it to kind of manifest and see what happens. Right now, what my favorite way to get off is, is actually, I mean, well, I be, I'm in a long distance relationship and I mean like super long, like Tokyo, San Francisco kind of thing. And we do love the Skype sex. Um, I, I'm, I'm the initiator, I know, and I usually, it's, it was kind of interesting because it's like, I'm dating someone who isn't in the porn industry and not an exhibitionist and so it's like I kind of I facilitate in a way and I'm like I'm like have you done this before and I'm like I'll let me do this let me show you and so I kind of I feel like I, I'm a cam girl basically I'm a cam girl but I'm not getting paid <laughs> but um, I get paid in love which is great um, but I basically like putting on shows for my girlfriend. It's it's great. I mean, I really, I mean, when she's here, I love being with her and I love just touching her skin and just everything about it. So if I had a choice between obviously doing my cam show or having my girlfriend with me and like making out, we're so, we're like teenagers. We love just making out and like, you have sex? You can say what you want. <laughs> Uh, I feel like that's a loaded answer. Um, yeah, we're total teenagers and I totally, because I grew up very born again Christian and like repressed sexuality, it's really hard for me to have a very like gentle make out. Like it's totally, if you watch my scenes, not at all like my scenes. Um, I think um, she, my girlfriend said at one time like no one, like I think your fans would be disappointed because you're so like, I don't know, it's like very sweet and kissy and like wonderful hand sex, I don't know. But um, but also really hot, like kind of cute, shy cam show. So it's totally not what I think people would expect, but that's what's hot. <laughs>